where did we come from? How did we get here? We got here because God called us. Well, it all began at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Oceanside. Really, they gave me a call when I was in Lancaster and asked me to start a mission congregation in Carlsbad. It was much more exciting than any church I'd ever been at because you're starting from zero. But I'll say one thing, I never once thought the church would fail. I never once said that to Joyce, the church would fail. We were driving down Monroe and out in front of the women's club, there was this little sandwich board about this high that said, Lutheran service, 9 a.m. Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Just in little spray-on stencil. And we looked at that and we thought, let's give it a try. This realtor told me uh, he started his business by going door to door. So I thought that's what I would do. And uh, actually, over the years, in 16 years, I went, I went to 32,000 homes in 16 years. And I felt the Holy Spirit bless that work. It would be every Friday afternoon and he wouldn't stop till he knocked on a hundred doors every Friday. I met every type of person on earth. Uh, they said things to me at their front door that you wouldn't believe. Um, one person said to me, uh, you're a Lutheran pastor? Uh, yes, I'm starting a church. Yes. First it was the Mormons going door to door. Then it was Jehovah's Witness. Now you Lutherans are doing it? I'll never forget that. They come from various places, emotionally and spiritually, and I think it's your position to gently uh, tell them about Jesus and invite them to hear a warm atmosphere where they're gonna hear about Christ as their Savior. The activities we had were at our home, like the, uh, the pool parties, youth group meetings, church picnics, everything was at our home with a pool. I bought the pool only because we were starting a church. And we had a park down the street and we used that. And so we actually bought the home uh, for the church to get the church started. And it worked out really well. When we were at the women's club, we called it church in a trunk. And pastor would drive up in his car and he and Brian they got it down, they said, we can do this in 30 minutes. And they'd open that trunk and everything had its place and they pulled everything out and set it all up because you try to jump in and help and pastor would, oh no, this goes here and this goes here. And pastor comes with all of the chairs in his, church, in his car, unloads them all, sets them all up. Joyce has all of the, the Sunday school equipment and stuff in her car. Church, church in, in the, the trunk. trunk, 30 minutes. He and Joyce were very dedicated to seeing the church prosper and move, move forward. Frankly, my family was magnificent in helping me. Joyce played the keyboard on a rocking keyboard like this. It would rock, it was so kind of, not Mickey Mouse, but unstable. She played on Sunday morning, she led the choir. Big in the ladies group, getting it started. Sunday school taught, she taught Sunday school. Joyce did everything and I can never thank her enough for what she did in getting this church started. What are we about? We are about serving God with our lives. I stayed there about two years, to 92, 93, and then 92, 93, we moved to the industrial park setting and we stayed there about, I think, uh, 10 years, 11 years, to 2003, and then moved onto the land around 2003. Took two years to build in 2005. In February of 2005, we had the dedication, uh, groundbreaking and dedication of the church. I want to tell you, Ken Wharton has done more toward getting us here than hardly any other member of this congregation. Would you please give him a round of applause? This 10 acres basically, and it was a, uh, what, produce? You know, it was all vegetables and so forth. And uh, so that made it very nice and we had to start uh, clearing it. There wasn't much that we had to clear. 10 acres was 
a little more than we really thought we needed. I believe the Holy Spirit was moving them to sell it to us because that was a perfect place for a church off of Main Drag, Poinsettia. When we finally bought the land, I was so excited that we finally had land. But then my thoughts were on, boy, now what? Now we got to build it. I suggested that we spin off the about five acres where we, which we did. We paid uh, 2.1 million, I believe it was, for this prop for the whole property. And after we got the entitlements over there and the grading done, we sold that for 2.3 million. So we got the land basically for nothing. <laughs> Bless our congregation's future with your grace, and may we now go forward in eagerness and anticipation to a day of dedication in your future. When we had dedication in February of 2005, I had been leading this church now for, since 1990, 15 years. But when we got up, and I got up in the pulpit for the first time, my knees shook. I've never had that happen to me before. I'm just being perfectly honest with you, because I was so excited about the new church. You know, I was about ready to cry, and my, knee, my knees were shaking, and I thought, how unprofessional of you. <laughs> but you couldn't see it through the robes. But my knees actually shook, because it was the first service. And that's how excited I was. But it's just a sense of pride that, wow, we did this, and it's, it's working fairly well. You know, it, it, we could work, we always can work on things to make it a little better, but it's, it's working wonderfully. What a day, great day this was for Jesus Christ. And so that was a highlight for me. It's the Holy Spirit who builds a church. I want to make sure that, gets, that, that, that that's told. The Holy Spirit builds a church, not the individual. But I think you can use every means to communicate that. What do we stand for? We stand for the Word of God. Where are we going? We are going wherever God is calling us. When we started the preschool about 2006, we had a preschool director and one teacher. That's all. We didn't know how many kids would come. We started, I believe, with uh, 16 kids or 30 kids, and that was it. That was the total size of the preschool. What's your fondest memory of Redeemer? There's a hallmark to our church, even today. And it's that the people you meet, you can hear them smile. They care about you, they're sincere. There is a, a quality of, um, of commitment towards you as a person. And that's not typical to a lot of churches today. And for us, that was something that uh, registered in our hearts and minds and still does today. Well, my fondest remembrances are in the early years because we didn't know what was going to happen. We had an uncertain future. We had no land. Um, uh, we haven't even had to borrow ushers from a Lutheran church that started us up because we didn't have enough people. How can we renew? We can renew by seeking God. What's the best part about this church? There is no need that goes unfulfilled here at Redeemer, uh, no need small or big or whatever. We, we come together, we support each other, and uh, there's no volunteer that won't step up and do what they need to do, and all the glory to God. I think that's where it comes down to. You know, We do it to glorify Him. My favorite thing has to be the choir. But, uh, uh, it's, you're a part of a wonderful group of people, and, and you're just, you have this closeness 
and, uh, and we all love to sing. I love to see all those kids up there at the pastor sermonette. That's one of the biggest draws I think this church has right now. How can we reflect? We can reflect by remembering where we've come from. Good morning, blessings to you guys. How are you doing? It's sad but true that most church plants don't survive. Um, that's just a statistic. It's very difficult to get a new church growing in a new community. So Redeemer really needs to celebrate that fact, that it's been a successful church plant. It takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of hands working together. So this congregation started out with about 30 people on the charter, and today we have over 250 in worship on a Sunday. So that's a pretty big uh, growth trend that we're continuing to climb. So I think that's really something to celebrate. How can we rededicate? Where we're at, I think, is at a good time in our ministry where even in just the last few years, we can look back and see where we've been and where we've come. And I, I think we've seen a lot of growth just recently. We've got a lot of new families and um, young couples and our confirmation class has grown. That's the middle school age, uh, as large as it's ever been. And uh, so I feel like we're, we're making some strides, but we've got a lot to do. Part, I mean. Carlsbad is a huge community, and I always think about the people that aren't here yet. Somebody once put the question to me, if Redeemer or any church was to close its doors, would the community miss you? And I think we always have to ask that question. Are we making such a difference in the lives of the people in this community that if we were to close our doors, the community would know? And I'll be honest with you, when I drive by there now, I get a deep sense of satisfaction knowing that that church is there on that place where I think God wanted it to be. And a lot of people spend a lot of time, a lot of hours, but it was the Lord Jesus who was glorified and He gets all the credit. The Holy Spirit gets all the credit for that church. We're just His tools. We have to recognize that that call is still on us. We're still the same people of God. We have different faces, we're different families by and large, but we have to renew that calling. We're still a church in this community. We're still called to reach with the gospel. We have to renew that. And then therefore rededicate ourselves to, to the work. Uh, just, we have to be just as committed today in 2015 as we were in 1990.